We are up on the roof terrace, having breakfast. So let me tell you about the plan for today. We take a tram car, cross Galata Bridge and go to the end of the line at Cabotage. From there, I understand, there is a sort of funicular railway that will take us up to Taksim Square. From Taksim Square, there is a veteran tram car which runs down Istiklal Street and so back to Galata Bridge, hoping to have found Galata Tower on the way down. Right here we go. And look, empty seats on an Istanbul tram car. Could be our lucky day. And here we are, in no time, at Cabotash. It was here that we boarded the boat for our Bosphorus cruise the other day. Perhaps you recognize it. Here are several similar boats tied up on this quay. And here, a clear view of how one gets aboard after the boat has poked its nose over the quay. Yes, there are cats in most places you go in Istanbul, and I know some people aren't happy to see this. I am not sure whether to call them stray cats or feral cats, but all the ones I saw looked well fed and clean. I think the people here bring them food and seem to be kind to them. Anyway, let's leave the pussycats now, and get on our way. We need to find that funicular to get up to Taksim Square. I suppose that it will be across the road somewhere, so let's just have a look round here before we cross over there. Yes, now Taksim Square is up there, at the top of that hill. We'll have to get across this road, somehow. Hope there's some lights and a crossing. Which there were. And we found that the start of the funicular is down here. Yes, it's an underground funicular. And incidentally, whilst we are down here, just notice how modern and clean everything is. Not decrepit and tatty, like Docklands Light Mail Way, and so much more which I could mention in England. You'll see in the next few shots, some people wondering why I should be filming. And here we are. See here, it's certainly a funicular. Here's the cable that controls it. And it's on its way back down to the shores of the Bosphorus. Whereas we must turn round and make our way up to Taksim Square. A nice smooth escalator, then some steps and we will be there. I think of Taksim as being the Trafalgar Square of this place. A large public area with the monument to the national hero, which we see soon. The big flags again remind us that Turkey is celebrating the anniversary of its foundation in 1923. Now, I think the next thing we require is a glass of tea. And here, right next to the exit from the underground, is a tea bar. I was so keen to get in there, that I didn't realize it was on the back of a lorry. It was an advertising event by a tea company, and the tea was free. So that was a nice little bonus. As we look towards this end of the square, we shall see the monument to the heroes of the Republic, led, of course, by Ataturk. And also at this end we find the start of Istiklal Street. 
the old tram is there actually behind those people but we'll see more of it soon now just a reminder that we are going to walk down istiklal street back to gallery the bridge Now we can have a good look at the tram. There are quite a few of what are called fast food outlets around here. I went in Burger King, but please don't tell anybody. I only did it so that I could say I had done it. I didn't like it much. So, let's have a look at Istiklal Street. As we have said previously, from Byzantine times, that is before 1453, foreigners, such as the large numbers of Genoese and Venetian traders in Istanbul, had to live on this side of the Golden Horn over the Galata Bridge. This continued through Ottoman times. The buildings we see today are perhaps mainly 19th century constructions mainly shops, office blocks and residential quarters, amongst which will be the diplomatic quarters, embassies, of a representative from many nations. When the capital moved to Ankara, in the 20s, some were retained as consular buildings, and we should see some of these today. I have seen some very patronizing and denigratory descriptions of Istiklal Street, but it looks fine to me. At least it isn't ankle deep in litter, like most English streets. And here's one of those consular buildings we mentioned. This one is the Greek consulate, I think. Also you will find some of these covered arcades, like in Leeds and no doubt other places. They are also mosques to be seen, as we go along, and also some churches. Our next incident of note, happened in one of these churches. To set the background for this incident, do you remember that mosque we went in after leaving Topkapi Palace? Perhaps you remember that I was going to leave because people were starting to assemble, ready for prayers. And then I was asked, why didn't I stay and film the Imam leading the prayers? I had usually had welcoming experiences on my visits to mosques, but this was the most clear cut. And then I came across this church, a Roman Catholic church, look, here's the Pope. So I went inside, there was not a service in progress. There were a few tourists looking around the church. I took some video footage. Then a person indicated that I should not take video footage. After all my recent experiences in mosques in Turkey, I was, more than anything, disgusted by this. I took more video footage. The person said, in English, that if I took more, he would smash my camera. The ethnicity of this person indicated that he was not Turkish. And this happened in a place of worship in which I expected to feel more at ease than in a mosque, not the converse. back out in the sunshine and fresh air. The tram is still running. Here's another church. And coming up next, another consulate, the Netherlands consulate. And another church.
Now, the next little sequence will need a bit of explanation. Partially hidden by the banging noises coming from a building site, we have a street entertainer playing a recording of the German national anthem. Then, and you might just be able to pick it out, he is accompanying this tune by playing notes on his musical saw. Anyway, the tram terminates here. You can go the rest of the way, down the hill, to the Galata Bridge, on another short underground railway, that we want to walk down. We are looking for Galata Tower on the way. I mean, you can see it from the other side of Galata Bridge, but I suppose we are too near these buildings here. I'm sure we'll find it, and if it is lift slash elevator, we'll go up to the top for the view. Some very interesting shops around here. Then a little square opened up, and look what's here. And, it had a lift. Didn't think they had them in those days. So, just enjoy the view. If you've watched all the series so far, you'll know what everything is. Here is at a Turk bridge, and we are now looking along the Golden Horn. Right, so we'd better get back down there, now, and find our way to Galata Bridge. Getting a bit steep here, the road has changed to steps. We are now at the bottom, and have turned left, to find the end of Galata Bridge. And here we are. So let's get on there, on the lower level. There are some nice shady cafes here, and we need a nice sit down, in the shade, and a glass of sweet tea. And now we can have a look at what's happening on the Golden Horn. Right, let's complete our crossing of the bridge, and have a look what's happening there.
you may recognize the Tower of Justice, in top copy there. We are now going to make our way along that shoreline, over there, to the railway station, and then get a tram back to the hotel. If we just look over the road, now, we have, the railway station, you may be aware, that this is where the Orient Express used to terminate.